Hi everyone, I'm Takanai and today we are touring through this surgical theatre. We are at Royal Blackburn Hospital and thanks to them they've allowed us into an empty theatre so that we can tour it, we can go around, show you guys the equipment and give you guys a real perception of what it is inside a theatre. So the first thing that happens is if you follow me to this board here, this is the surgical safety checklist. First of all you do a team brief kind of go through every single person in the room, what's going on with the patient, and then you sign in in the anesthetics room, which we're going to just now. You do a timeout before you start anything, you sign out and then you do a team debrief. The whole point of this procedure is to just make sure that you're doing the right thing on the right patient and everything is in check. So this is the anesthetics room, uh, this is where the patient comes in and they get the induction done for the anesthesia. In this corner over here we have the theatre man computer, this is basically the computer they use um, to get all the information about the patient and anything that's relevant to their care. Whilst they're in here, uh, up here we have the medications cupboard and we've got controlled drugs as well that are always locked away we've got drugs like morphine uh, fentanyl in this corner we have the fridge so an example of a drug that you'd keep in a fridge in fact we've got the list here so we've got saxamethonium atricurium rocuronium and xylocaine uh, muscle relaxants anesthesia drugs that need to be kept cool they stay in this fridge in here we have cannulas needles just typically needles and syringes staying in this corner uh over here we have something really important this is a ppe sort of like docking station you've got aprons and gloves for everyone coming in this is an infusion machine over here this is an airway trolley it has everything to do with uh, intubation or anything that goes down the airway, uh, LMAs and such. You can take a look for example, this is one of the sort of apparatus. This is a laryngeal mask airway and LMA. So it goes and sits on your larynx and then it gives access to your airway through, through that means. This is an anesthesia machine but we will not look at this one, we'll look at the one in the main operating room. I need to show you the scrub room where the doctors and the scrub nurses and anyone who's scrubbing in scrubs up so in here is the scrub room when anyone is scrubbing up they make sure that they do it in a certain way where their hands and parts of their arms stay sterile because they'll be putting on scrubs which you can find down here so just to summarize everything we've been through we've come in we've gone to the checklist board We've made sure that everything is, is okay, everything's correct. The patient has gone and everyone's getting prepared now. So we're just gonna run through all the equipment you can see. In this corner, we have the stand that has positioning equipment, uh, such as these pillows here, these pads. We have some headrests and stuff to put just at any part of the body to support the patient in specific positions. We also have some shaving equipment, um, like the shaver here, if we need access to skin directly. Here, we have the bear hugger machine, uh, which is it's really in the name. This is something that you plug into like a blanket or a covering and the different settings for temperatures and you warm up the patient. Over here, we have the different disposal bins Here, this big machine, uh, which looks quite complicated, is what we call an anesthesia machine. Over here in this corner, we have a dithermy machine, which is used for ligation, cutting, and cauterizing. It has different parts. Uh, at the top here is a gas supply. Uh, in the middle here is the control panel. 
and down here is the operation for the light and the camera Over here is a control panel. It also comes with a clock and uh, several different things. You can control the temperature of the room, ventilation, and the main operating lights as well. All of that is monitored or controlled through this panel. In this corner, we have uh, two more computers. One thing I've learned is it's always good to have a computer in the room because they're invaluable when it comes to accessing information. Last but not least is uh, the main operating table. Uh, these things are actually quite advanced. You can change the height to fit, the angle. You can really change it to suit any type of surgery you're doing or any uh, procedure. And you've got these absolutely massive uh, lights up here. Uh, I don't know, you can come and take a closer look and see how bright that is. And they're controlled through the panel we talked about earlier. When the procedure is done, the patient goes out through these doors here and the last room is the dirty utility room. I'll begin with the sluice. So any waste or things that need to be disposed of uh, go into the sluice. And uh, this area is mainly for specimens. So in this cupboard here, you have containers to put some specimens in. So depending on the procedure you've done. So you also have the box that the specimen goes onto, which is here. And that is it for the dirty utility room. Okay, so that is the entire tour of the operating theater. One thing I, I need to take note of or to mention is that the theaters have different uses. So this theater, for example, is mainly used for ENT and max fact surgery. There are different theaters. There's some used for general surgery and some for orthopedics, which is slightly different in terms of the structure of the room, the equipment available in the room as well. So just bear that in mind, but I hope uh, I've managed to give a good sort of explanation and guide as to what happens uh, in the operating theater and what equipment is available. It's Takanai Murray, uh, third year medical student from the University of Central Lancashire, and uh, thank you for watching.